Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. Saja hao, wanakam, anjong hai seo to everyone. Uh, a very good morning. Thank you for joining us this early on a Saturday. It is a pleasure to see so many familiar faces as well as new ones. Um, I'm Radzia and I'll be your host for the day. The important reminder before we begin, this session is being recorded and live streamed on Facebook. Also, please mute your audio when you're not speaking as to not disrupt the flow of the session. You can use the chat room to ask questions and PBL related sharing. Feel free to use the chat room to even introduce yourselves as well. Before we begin, on behalf of Arts Ed, I would like to thank our funders, Yaisan Hasana and Penang Education Council for granting us this opportunity. I uh, would like to welcome Datuk Shahira Ahmad Bazari, Managing Director of Yayasan Hasana, and Puan Fatima Hasan, Director of Penang Education Council. Thank you for joining us today despite your busy schedule. In keeping with the clear shift towards student centered learning, as outlined in the Malaysian Education Blueprint, this discussion forum is organized to facilitate a discussion on the effectiveness of adopting a 21st century teaching strategies and creative pedagogy to engage young learners. Also to provide a platform for dialogue among teachers and educators to share the benefits and challenges of incorporating the PBL element of place, community and local resources into their lessons. Now let's take a look at the agenda for today's session. We will begin with a 15 minute overview about PBL teacher training program. After that is a 45 minute discussion forum featuring panelists from the three schools, followed by another 45 minutes to one hour of discussion in a smaller breakout room and key point sharing by the rapporteurs. And finally, our first ever virtual recognition ceremony to acknowledge all the teachers and schools involved. We are looking forward to a very interesting discussion. So let's begin our session today with an overview of the PBL teacher training program. I'd like to welcome Chen Yuk Pin, Arts Ed Senior Manager and Trainer and Facilitator from the PBL Capacity Building Program for Teachers. Pass on to you, Yuk Pin. Thank you, Raja. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Yuk Pin, uh, uh, currently the Senior Manager at uh, Raja said. Um, so I'm actually involved uh, uh, in place-based learning, uh, especially teacher training. Uh, since like so four years ago, 2017, that we started. So uh, the next thing, uh, next slide, please. You can, yeah. Um, just giving this overview to everybody that uh, Asa actually launched this uh, place based learning uh, approach with uh, eight pilot schools in Penang. So these are, we have a three primary schools that you can see on your left hand side. And we also tried out with uh, Sekola Menenga secondary schools and also with private schools, yeah? So you can see that uh, there are a wide range of actually uh, different types of uh, uh, school. We would like to see how place-based learning were able to incorporate into the uh, school system and the school, whether it's called curriculum or curriculum. Uh, next. And why we're doing this? I mean, I said it's been actually testing and experimenting a uh, place-based learning approach in non-formal setting. And for the last four years, we hope that this approach that we tested actually very effective would be able to share with the school teacher as well. So this, therefore, we started to launch the training to actually uh, hope to provide a practical learning platform for teachers. So there will be a uh, theoretical training as well as very practical and also uh, share what we actually been tested uh, to teach her how to plan, design, and execute a project that weave into the 21st century learning schemes. And the more important is how we can connect the students' learning to the real world context. So combining classroom and the community. Next. And place-based learning, as many people might know or might not know. So it's actually uh, an approach that we strongly and encouraged because you can see the effects with the students uh, where they engage with local environment, local communities, and also the local issues. And over here, the most important is learner in PBL, 
activate learning in a more authentic setting. So it's not just in the classroom, but also dealing with the and communicating, interacting with real people, like you can see in the pictures here with the auntie in Charasta Market. Yeah. Next. So, like I said just now, PBL uh, encourages integrated uh, knowledge from the classroom and real world learning. So, when these two combine, where uh, students actually obtain objective uh, knowledge from the classroom, they then practice it in the place and the community. So, making their knowledge a bit more contextualized. And when these two merge, it becomes a learning platform for students. And hopefully, with this, we actually connect you know, the textbook knowledge and the real knowledge and the student able to open up, not just within their personal level and also linking to community and the global issues. Next. So some of the characteristics that you can see is for PBL uh, is always experiential learning for the students and learning centered uh, with the students and they have to apply the skills that they actually learn with the community. So let's see how uh, will it look like here yeah? next. And again, this one is uh, a sub confusion or sometimes we call PDL, then we put the P aside. But actually the P that we are looking at here, the place-based learning is actually a interrelated learning approaches that combine all the P that you can see here. Uh, we are very familiar with project-based learning in our uh, school system. I mean, a lot of teachers here today. Problem-based learning, uh, a lot of the STEM actually uh, applies it. And here, inquiry-based learning as well, but, uh, and also community-based. But in place-based, it's actually encompass all these together. So uh, the real people basically uh, is more the, the core focus in the, the PBL that uh, giving the real issues, which is mostly problem-based learning sometimes or inquiry based, yeah. Next. And in the teacher training that we uh, introduced to the local school teacher, we usually highlight these three main stages. You can see that uh, the teachers have to go through this planning stage. So they have to prepare a lot, you know, with the schools, uh, with the teachers, and also equip themselves with the site knowledge and also their own knowledge. And when the design is where the, all the creative juices to put into the lesson plan, how to actually make classroom uh, more uh, active learning uh, with all the creative strategies and all. So that's where the stage two is actually happening, connect to the community. And the last part, which is execution, means implementing the project, carrying it out. So this is usually a lot of our PBL teachers uh, know this very well. Oh, PBL planning, design, and execution. Yeah. Next one, and in PBL, the three domains of learning is always, always very core, which is not just stay in within cognitive, the social emotional part where the doing part, where the five senses uh, is always very uh, a core that we are missing actually in the classroom, where we couldn't even simulate in the classroom, but in place-based learning is where we are going to uh, give the real learning, uh, authentic learning that I said just now, uh, that we cannot simulate in the classroom, but it's actually naturally have when the students actually have to interact with the, the real side. And the most important in the behavioral part where when the, the issues or you know the, the interaction is real, therefore where the student will have to have the feeling and expression and also uh, take on action uh, on the, the third part, yeah. Next slide. And we uphold learning cycle in PBL uh, quite a lot, where the first beginning student will be introduced uh, into certain concepts and contexts, like you know whether it's a market, whether it's a it's a park or it's a garden, and then they will park, uh, provided a lot more on engagement and the experiences in the site. And they will also put on uh, later on to analyze their data collection to see uh, whether uh, they can actually uh, give certain opinion. This is where the critical thinking came can come in. And after that, the student will uh, usually uh, think of actions, whether it's exhibition or sharing their findings to uh, maybe their schools or more uh, audience other than their workshops 
uh, peers. I guess it's the last one over here. So what makes a PBR project? Here, I think it's very easy. I mean, but some teacher will say like, why is it so easy? But actually sometimes it's not easy also, but I think it's the heart. So usually we say there's just three ingredients that needs to be, you know, uh, do in PBL, jiggle, jiggle, yeah? Uh, so you put look at a two-site environment and then uh, work with the community and the NGO and the teacher and the expert uh, are all then these three, a triangle, everybody work together. I think uh, then, and this process, then we work together. So this is my overview for the, this uh, PBR approach that Ansel is actually uh, trying to introduce to the local teacher. And later we will play a short uh, clip that uh, recorded um, the cohort number three, 2020 and 2021, three schools participation in PBL. And yeah, uh, pass it to you even uh, to play the video. Thank you for the overview, Yopin. Next, we will be listening in to a moderated session with a group of panelists from the three schools. This session will give us an insight on each school's project, highlight and the challenges as well as strategies on how they navigated and conducted PBL through planning, designing and implementing a project. The session will be moderated by Dr. Josephine Chan Aileen. She's a part-time lecturer at Han Chiang University College of Communication and a research fellow at Wawasan Open University. She has more than 25 years of working experience in various industries. She is also one of the trainer and facilitator from the PBL Capacity Building Program for Teachers. So Dr. Jill, please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, Ratsia. Uh, before starting the discussion uh, forum, let me briefly introduce our panelists. First, Mr. Kang Gek Lai is from SMK Barapit, a teacher with 29 years of experience teaching mathematics. Next, Ms. Lim Chin Chin. She is from Penang Chinese Girls Private High School. She has 26 years of experience teaching subjects such as history, Bahasa Malaysia, and social studies. Our third panelist, Ms. Clarina and Anthony from SMK Abdullah Munshi. 
She has 30 years of experience teaching English and arts. And our last panelist, Ms. Liao Gingyi, she is the school principal of Penang Chinese Girls Private High School with 24 years of experience. She has um, te teaching experience in science and mathematics. The discussion forum is in three parts. Part one, the panelists will share their school projects. Part two will be a discussion on two topics, student learning and the community. Part three will then focus on challenges and strategies. Okay, so with this, over to you, Mr. Kang, to kick off part one of our discussion forum. Okay, I'm Mr. Kang from Brapit, uh, SNK Brapit. So our school project is, uh, is named as, uh, is it a matter of, uh, sorry, so is it a matter of the ribbing or uh, the death? Okay, so uh, our school is, uh, is uh, uh, in BM, Bukit Mutajam. So it's, uh, normally our school is, uh, uh, is considered SMK, but mostly all the, all the students are from Chinese, uh, nearly 95%. Okay, so our project, we have nine students uh, form two. They are involved in this project. Okay. And we have four teachers also involved in this PBL. Okay. Uh, myself, Mr. Kang, and Mr. Chin also. Then another two lady teachers, Puan Tam and Puan Ang. So we are from different departments. Myself and Mr. Chin from mathematics departments. Uh. Then uh, Puan Tam and Puan Ang, they are from uh, language department. One is one of them is English teacher, another one is Chinese teacher. So we will visit our this uh, paper FG site, okay. And the owner of the site is uh, Mr. Tan Sing Lim, okay. Uh, you can look at the, the photo on the top there, uh, Mr. Tan. Okay, next. Okay, our project is started uh, last December, okay. And we will finish, uh, we plan we will finish until uh, April this year. But because of pandemic, then we, we have a lot of uh, consequences, then it will drag. Okay, so the project planning design is supposed to uh, start uh, December 2020, then until February of this year. Then we continue to the implementation, okay, from the March until April, okay. But the time also is a pandemic time then uh, we, we have to see how to solve it. Lah. Okay, next. Okay, in this project, we have, uh, PBL, okay, we have uh, under this curriculum uh, curriculum site, then we, we consider we have a uh, few subjects involved, okay, like mathematics, history, and Chinese language, mostly from Chinese language because the the form one syllabus, uh, form one Chinese language syllabus, they have this topic. So this PBL project is considered very, uh, is it very suit to the, uh, suit to the yeah, Chinese uh, language form one. Okay. So uh, mathematics, we involve this uh, basic measurement, right? Ratio conversion of units. Lah. So we need this kind of uh, skills. Uh, then uh, from history also, they must know uh, this history from Rapid village, okay? Then uh, from Chinese language, they know about this uh, Taoism, uh, they know about this, uh, uh, what is it, funeral, then they have to know about this writing skill, okay, grammar, and, and there are a few skills also, lah. okay? So our objective is, uh, uh, we are, we are, we are, we are having a lot of objectives, but uh, I, I just list two. The important is, it, uh, is the last one. Uh, after the whole project PBL, students are able to convey their knowledge and skills and of making the paper FG to their, uh, to our school SNK students. 
So on that time, the students present their outputs in the school. We call it gallery walk. So from there, they can see the poster, flowchart, PowerPoint, video, and one also uh, one of them is a model paper FG. So at least uh, after the project, the whole school students, especially the afternoon session students, they know about this paper FG uh, in this uh, Brape village, which is near to our school. Okay, next. Okay, from the project execution, uh, we have to uh, go around like introduction. So the first thing we introduce to our students, the uh, traits, especially the traditional in Kampong Brape, although they came from Brape, some of them also they didn't know about Brape. Okay, some teachers also didn't know about Brape. But from here, we introduce to them, okay, let them uh, make interested to this project. After that, uh, students, they are encouraging to go to visit Okay, then and we collect the data from the paper FEG artisans. After that, they came back, they categorized, they processed all the data. Okay, and then uh, lastly, they make one gallery walk to present to all the students to share their experience. Okay, thank you. Next. Okay, after every uh, activities, we have do a uh, few of assessments, like formative assessment and summative assessment. So from there, we can know the students' uh, thinking. We can know their, we can get their feedback uh, to, to, what is it, to, to motivate them, uh, to motivate them to continue the, this, uh, this process and continue this project uh, until the end. So from here, we can see there are few students uh, are given the good, uh, positive, positive uh, feedback. And this will help us to finish the project. And to, after that, we will, we will very sacrifice to this project. And teachers and students also, they are very satisfied with the project. Okay. Okay, the impact, uh, from the impact to the students, okay, we can see the students, they change, uh, they really change from uh, solo, last time they from solo, they from individually, now they come to collaboration, okay, and students also, they didn't learn from teacher, some of them, they learn from other, they learn from each other also, they learn from technology tools, okay. So from there, they learn a lot of skill. So we hope that one day, this kind of student, they have the potential. Uh, they have potential, uh, potential to suggest uh, innovative solution and ideas to their society, to their community, okay? and to solve the problems, especially the complex problems in the future. And these students also, they have the potential to communicate uh, effectively before they graduate. So they have this kind of experience. Okay, from PBL, impact to the teachers. So from the PBL teachers, they learn how to design the learning activities, okay, such that uh, encourages collaboration uh, as solving, uh, problem solving, discussion, and reflection also. And teachers, they learn a lot of the skills to incorporate okay, the different media. Okay? Uh, then this incorporate skills, we, we, call, we, we assume is a key part okay, in how we design the lesson plans. Okay? To design the lesson plans, we need this kind of skill. Okay? And from there also, we see impact to our community especially to this uh, paper FPG uh, founder, okay? So we see the trader, the artisans themselves, they feel their trade is uh, appreciated by young people already. 
especially from the uh, uh, student from my school. Okay, last time maybe these are not the uh, this is like no normal normal job for them only. But since we have this PBL, then they communicate to our students also. Then they they can can see the uh, this trait is appreciated. Okay, by young people now. Okay, artisans themselves they also feel that they need their hope for the continuation of this art because our students uh, communicate with them. Our students make the research. After that, we documented okay their craft and their trade. Okay, and this will help them to continue uh, this uh, traditional trade for the future. Okay. I think my, my uh, presentation is until here. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Mr. Ka. So, Ms. Lim, uh, would you like to share your school project? Over to you. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, we yes. can. Yeah. I'm Lim Chin Chin from Penang Chinese Girl Private High School. Okay, my PBL, our school PBL project uh, title is The Rise on Plate. Next, please. Oh, we have 35 students taking part in this project. Okay, their elective subjects are business study, home science, or commercial art or arts. So uh, my students are in Form 4 last year. Uh, this year they are in form five, so mostly uh, this year we are having online class lah. Okay, and then uh, next one. This is my team. Okay, uh, last year I partner with uh, Desmond Chin, uh, who is the home science teacher. Then this year I have Miss Wong and Miss Ang. Okay, Miss Wong is a language teacher and Miss Ang is a business study teacher and also teaching uh, mathematics. Okay. Next, please. So uh, uh, this year our uh, our we, we, we uh, the project we are not go on site this year. So students engage with the uh, teachers and the parents and also our ex student uh, Margaret Miss Margaret. Lim. Uh, she is the uh, the traditional Hokkien savory in Penang, the Kochabi uh, Kue Enterprise. My our ex student. Okay, next one. So this project, uh, the duration of this project, uh, we started last year July until November, and then continue uh, phase two this May to uh, uh, this year May. We will carry on until November. Okay. Then the uh, duration for this project, we planning and design the, the project about four months. Okay. Then the implementation, one session per week. Okay. 80 minutes for the uh, ordinary class and, uh, uh, and, and 60 minutes online class. Huh? Okay. This time not included the, the spent, uh, discussion with the committee teachers and group members. Okay. So we implement, uh, we carry on this uh, uh, project into curriculum. Okay. Last year we have, uh, we, uh, the subject's uh, title is uh, Liberal Art Education. Okay. This year the subject title is Social Science. Next please. So our project planning, uh, we, this project we plan uh, uh, including five subjects. Okay, for, uh, for the moment we finish uh, language, home science, and mathematics. So uh, two more subjects to go. So these are the uh, problem or assess the the student have to investigate. Okay, the function of rice, the importance of rice and uh, food crisis. So uh, the uh, the price the, the rice sub supply chain and the challenges not yet. So the student not only learn the, the knowledge, they also learn skill and value. Okay, next one. 
So we we design the the project in an active uh, way. So we using creative tools. The, uh, this home uh, this hand on activities make the learning more uh, active. Okay, they don't feel boring. So we invite a CEO uh, to share the real experience, and then students do use their five senses. Okay, to to analysis the case. Uh, this is the uh, leftover rice, uh, mute. It's called mute, uh, uh, traditional snack, okay? Traditional snack. Uh. Okay, next one. Uh, student also collect uh, primary data themselves for a month at home. Okay, they calculate and compare uh, the, the learning. Uh, the comp and do the comparison. Okay, the learning process is quite uh, authentic because this is link the school education with the real life. Okay, they collect the, the 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 data and calculate themselves. Okay, next one. This is the four stages of uh, project execution. So for the introduction, the uh, student bring the rice at home. Okay, share uh, their piece and then the brand and the advantages of this rice. Okay, student also engage with the uh, teachers and the parents about their uh, festival that they that use rice. Okay, student interview uh, teachers as a community. Okay, so uh, student give the suggestion to the community to solve the problem and then also create, design, a brochure. Uh, to publish the movie, okay. the action. Next one. Okay. Uh, we also uh, lead the student to do uh, research, okay, and practice their communication skill. So students uh, do the mapping and then share the, the knowledge. Uh, this objective is uh, to find out uh, the, what's the function of rice, where the rice, where the, the rice, uh, value change and then uh, they also discuss the topic which topic they want to focus on okay. uh, next one so to uh, to assess the student so we ask the student to post it their their opinion okay uh, right out on the um, board and then uh, this one I conducted in, in Mandarin. So these are the translation. Of course, uh, they are positive and de negative feedback. And from the feedback, we, we, we do some uh, changes and then we can know the weaknesses and interest the uh, uh, student. So we do some adjustment for the, the following uh, activities. Okay. Next one. So the impact, uh, this uh, PBL project, I found that um, this is positive impact more than negative. Lah. So either student, teachers, or communities. Okay. Student, they are able to gain knowledge other than textbook. Okay, they can think out of the box and not based on the, uh, uh, not just being um, spoon feed. Okay, then they are more uh, motivated. To express their 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 idea, okay? and then the teacher also learn together with the student. Uh, the teachers become more creative, and then uh, more idea. Then they can apply all these tools in their, their own subject also. And then the community uh, side uh, also uh, PBL raise the awareness in the community, and the community problem could be solved by a student project also. Of course, we, we, we also face some uh, challenges. Okay? So these challenges and uh, impact, I will explain detail during the uh, forum discussion later. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Ms. Lim. Um, so next, um, for Ms. Clarina, could you share your school project? Over to you. Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, I'm Karina and uh, I'll be sharing about our PDF project on behalf of uh, SMK Abdullah Munshi. 
Our project is called Kampung Dodo, Dah Kenal Makin Cinta, To Know Is To Love. Okay, uh, next. All right, uh, so these are the teachers involved in uh, the PBA project. Uh, we have uh, six teachers all together, and uh, we have 30 to 35 students, from four, uh, from four students who are uh, 16 year olds, and they are from the art stream. Next. Okay, uh, so our project actually uh, focuses on the community around the school. And, uh, you know, there are a few kampongs, there are a few villages around the school. And uh, uh, after looking at all these uh, villages, we decided to actually focus on Kampung Dodo, which is uh, nearest uh, to the school. And uh, as we went in to uh, look at all the things that exist in Kampung Dodo, as we interacted with the community, um, we decided to actually zoom in and, and you know, into a smaller scope where we decided to choose uh, Masjid Wan Cik Dawud and also the tombstone uh, trade. It's a heritage, uh, her, uh, I mean, a traditional trade. So we sort of uh, uh, focus on these two where we, can, we will also, at the end, uh, students will be able to connect all this with the community and also themselves. Next. Okay, uh, the timeline of the project, okay, the planning of the project started with the teacher's training in January to March, all right? And then uh, throughout uh, the training, after the training, we uh, planned the activities and then we started uh, the project with the students in April. So as we started in April and then uh, that's when we had our challenges coming in, okay? And which I will uh, talk about later. And uh, the sessions that we had was half one and a half hours per session, and we integrated the activities into our co-curriculum. So it was actually outside of the classroom uh, and integrated into co-curriculum. Next. All right. Uh, so if, if we look at the planning here, okay, uh, the subjects that we actually could integrate uh, across the curriculum was uh, fine arts. Uh, where we were looking at architecture, graphics, illustration, and photography, and uh, the subject of history, where students would also be learning architecture and the history of civilization in history, and uh, Islamic studies. Islamic studies, the focus will be on the functions of the mosque, okay? And then when you come to uh, knowledge, uh, skills, and also values, students will learn to identify the cultural assets that is uh, around their school, okay? And also they discover and understand what is actually in the community, okay? And then uh, when it comes to skills, students will uh, actually learn to collect da data from uh, the sources that they are researching on, okay? And besides uh, collecting data, students learn to collaborate, okay? They come together, they collaborate, they share ideas, and they learn to cooperate uh, in their groups, okay, to uh, actually uh, uh, extract the data, extract the data that is uh, specific to the project that we are uh, looking at, okay. So whatever data that is unnecessary, students will learn how to, you know, extract what is uh, important and not important. Okay, the values here is um, through this project, okay, we are actually trying to bridge students with the community and also we get the students to look at the cultural heritage that is present around them and to appreciate all this heritage that is actually slowly fading away. And also uh, through this project, students will actually learn uh, the importance of preserving uh, not only uh, the uh, her cultural heritage, but also spe specifically towards uh, the traditional traits that exists in the community before it all uh, fades away. Okay, and then um, if we look at assets investigated in the community, okay, the most important thing is we are looking at the cultural assets of uh, Kampung Dodo, and uh, our, the students will be looking at the intricate process involved in uh, tombstone construction or the creating the tombstone. Okay, what are the processes involved? And also when it comes to the mosque, they will be investigating, they will be uh, actually looking at the important role of the mosque uh, in bridging the community together in many, many ways, okay, which uh, we will be sharing about later uh, in our session. Okay, uh, so uh, the objective 
uh, we uh, when, when we started the first activity with the students, the objective was to introduce the location of the project. Usually, we will go out. We will, uh, you know, it's like the recce where we go out and expose the student to the place. But since uh, we had the challenge of the pandemic and we could not go out to the actual site, uh, we brought in um, videos, pictures, uh, and maps of uh, Kampung Dodo to the students in the in the classroom. Okay into the setting. So the acti activity that students went through was uh, they were brainstorm about the village because not all the students are from Kampung Dodo. Uh, we have students from many other places in Penang and only a few, a handful of them are from Kampung Dodo. So uh, we had sharing, okay, the creative tools that we had was uh, pictures of the real location. And then uh, we had a chart, a chart where it's called KWL chart. Uh, where we had students to share what they knew about Kampung Dodo, what they wanted to learn, and what they will eventually learn about. And then uh, we had student sharing. Uh, student sharing is uh, more of students who are staying in Kampung Dodo. Okay, uh, next activity. Uh, once uh, we, they were introduced uh, on the locations of Kampung Dodo, what exists in Kampung Dodo, we went a bit more in detail of the place that the students were supposed to um, is supposed to uh, research on. Okay, so what we did was uh, we got maps for the students. Okay, they were supposed to draw the maps uh, of Kampung Dodo, the whole area, and we gave them pictures of uh, specific and um, specific places, uh, the name of roads, and um, uh, whatever that is significant in the place itself. And the students draw the map and they place all the uh, pictures wherever it's supposed to be. So uh, we also had uh, students sharing later and presenting their work. Okay, next. okay. so if you look at the project ex execution, we had uh, the first part of introduction was introducing the site and also the uh, mapping of Kampung Dodo. Okay, and uh, student engagement was when they came together, collaborated uh, what they needed to do and they mapped out the area, they shared their ideas, and they also uh, gave their own ideas with their, uh, in, together in groups. Okay, uh, critical reflection. We had reflection on the first two activities and we could not move on further as uh, you know the hindrance of, uh, of uh, MCO and then we are all uh, at home now. So uh, hopefully after this, we can still uh, continue with our project. Okay, next. Okay, uh, so one of the creative tools that we used was Post-it, where we asked students to share their feedback, share their feelings on um, what they have learned okay, uh, on the site, what they have got from uh, the two activities that they, that they went through. So students actually, they, they felt happy because they, they learned new things, okay? they learned from their friends and, and they, they, are ex they were excited to actually go on further. And they wanted to go and uh, you know, meet the community. So that is one, one creative tool that we use. Next. All right. And another way of uh, assessing, okay, besides uh, sharing, presenting, drawing, and mapping out, uh, besides uh, using it as an activity, we teachers, we also assessed students through these three activities. So when they were sharing uh, about uh, I mean, after the mapping and all, we found out that, you know, uh, students who are not from Kampung Dodo, they actually were not sure about all these places and, you know, uh, they, 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 they had some problems and they had to get their friends who were, who were staying in Kampung Dodo to help them out. So, for the next activity, we planned a, a treasure hunt where students had to go around, we gave them a set of questions, they had to go around Kampung Dodo, uh, taking photographs and uh, answering uh, questions in the treasure hunt. But unfortunately, after we gave them that, uh, we went into lockdown. So uh, the following part, we could not uh, carry it out. So hopefully, uh, we will uh, move on in the future. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, as you can see, um, the, the, there's definitely a very positive impact on uh, students, teachers, as well as the community. Okay, uh, for students, they are able to explore Okay, something that they something that's new to them. We are giving them the opportunity to go out, out of the classroom, out of the school, to go and explore, to go and engage with the community, and uh, they discover the significance of what is around them. 
and also they 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 learn the importance of cultural heritage uh, in the community. Uh, for teachers, actually, um, it's a very big impact because we learn how to conduct uh, lessons creatively. We are coming together as a team. Okay, and we are we are planning lessons. We are sharing our ideas. We are sharing our experiences, and uh, and we are also looking at uh, coming up with more projects later. So that is a big impact on us. And for com for the community, uh, the impact on the community is the community. We are bringing the community into the school as well as we are going out to the community. So the the bridging is there, the bridging of uh, students and community. And as we know, uh, the challenges are you know as I've already told. Uh, because of the pandemic, okay, it's a bit of a problem to go out to the site to actually get first-hand data, which is very important in uh, PBR. Okay, thank you very much. That's a brief overview of our project from SMP Abdullah Munshi. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much uh, to the three panelists for sharing your school's uh, uh, PBL project experiences. Okay, so it looks like uh, each project has a different approach within the school context. Uh, like you can see Penang Chinese Girls High School, uh, private high school, uh, they integrated PBL into their social studies subject. Uh, while SNK Barapit, they considered PBL as their special project. And uh, based on what uh, SMK Abdullah Munshi shared, um, they mentioned that they combined PBL as uh, their co-curriculum. Okay, so now let's move on to part two of our discussion forum. Uh, and we will be talking about the topic on uh, student learning. Okay, so the question that I would like to pose to the panelists is, how does PBL compare to the traditional classroom learning? So, Ms. Clarina, would you like to uh, give your thoughts? Uh, okay, th uh, thank you, Joe. Okay, uh, when it comes to uh, PBL learning compared to traditional classroom, I will focus on student engagement. Uh, actually, PBL uh, encourages or actually pushes students towards active and uh, meaningful learning. Okay, uh, through these activities, students get a chance to explore. Uh, they get a chance to experience real life situations, which give them an opportunity to interact with the community. So when they interact with the community, they learn the appropriate uh, communication skills, you know, because they're always in the classroom with their friends and they're at home, they rarely go out to communicate with the community. So, you know, they learn uh, all these soft skills, communication skills, which are important. And uh, student, you know, when they, when they are involved in the process of exploring, analyzing, uh, finding solutions, sharing ideas in, in the process of uh, PBL, uh, they're actually actively involved in this um, process of knowledge construction. They're constructing knowledge on their own also. Not only getting, uh, I mean, knowledge from teachers and, and, and friends, they're also actually constructing this knowledge in their mind and, and then carrying it out in their activities. And then, uh, you know, PBL encourages the students to collaborate, to share their ideas, to brainstorm, to solve problems. And, you know, we teachers feel happy when we see students so actively being engaged and students are so excited when they are able to come up with ideas and solutions. And then, you know, they, they, you know, they, they, when people accept their ideas, we can see the, the quieter ones becoming more engaged, opening up. You know, uh, we, we can actually uh, push the students to show their talent. You know, we are, we are not, we don't judge them. Yeah, that's the thing. The friends, you know, when they are involved actively, no one judge, will judge them. Right? Yeah. We teachers, yeah, we, we yeah. tell them, I think yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so I think it's a very good point that you raised concerning student engagement. And it also ties in, you know, with uh, the uh, uh, 4C, 1V, um, uh, the 21st century learning skills. So that's really good. Uh, what about Mr. Kang, uh, from your point of view, uh, besides student engagement, is there anything that is uh, uh, related, you know, that you would like to share about what's the difference between PBL and the traditional classroom learning? I think normally in our classroom, Anything uh, okay. that you would like to add? 
uh, I think normally uh, in in normal school they, they will use the uh, still they use they are using the we call it conventional uh, type of uh, teaching and learning uh, okay although we say we are using uh, technology tools but the pedagogy still like conventional so students are not encouraging to uh, to learn uh, this kind of skills uh, from the conventional uh, conventional room like uh, their classroom so sometimes we need to uh, take out of the box i mean that we take out them from the classroom to outside then only they can see when we want to learn something new it's not from the classroom it's not from our teacher maybe we can learn something new from our community. That's why PBL is something like very new uh, approach. Let our students to see directly outside the community, yeah. Yeah. how the community works, how the community do their things. Then students, how to communicate with them. Inside the school, students only, they have the chance to communicate to teachers only and to their friends. So it's like informal, not, not very formal. So when they come to outside to the community, then they will think how to communicate to the outsider. Okay, like this PBL, my, my school student, they need to think how to communicate to the founder. They don't know anything about the founder. This is the first time they, they met the founder. Then they have to uh, learn some skills. Lah. They have to learn some skills before that. They, they meet the founder. So these few things, these kind of things, uh, we cannot learn from classroom. <laughs> we have to yeah. learn from outside. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and I, okay, thank you, Mr. Kang. So uh, that's that's quite true, you know, based on what you say uh, concerning like the real world experiences yeah. uh, and bringing in people into your school. So I think this is something that uh, Ms. Lim, uh, that you also sort of like roughly did, right? Can you share thank a little bit? Thank you. For me, PBL learning is more authentic compared to the normal lesson. This is because it's connect the real world. For example, yeah. our students collect data by themselves instead of taking the information, uh, information from the internet. Okay? So uh, just like our project, the student needs to, uh, uh, need to record the amount of the rice. So they have eaten every day. So including lunch and dinner for a month. So from the data they collect, then they need to calculate the average of the total amount of the rice needed for the one person in a lifetime. After that, they need to compare the amount of the rice needed in our country then the, with the rice produced in Malaysia. Then they come out the conclusion, oh, Malaysia doesn't have enough rice. To produce to the student, to, to, to produce to the uh, people. So uh, our girl now we rice. Everybody go and uh, stock up the rice during the emergency. This is not crazy, huh? but, uh, uh, This is what everybody uh, did the first MCO and now also. Okay, so PBL uh, train our student find out the problem or uh, situation by themselves based on the data. And then they they will collect. Then they, they not just listen to others because they learn from their experience. So uh, beside that, I think uh, PBL also uh, connect the, the student to the real life. And then they, they brought the, the, the uh, rice from home. Okay? Then uh, they, they, they have to check out the price they eat. Okay? And then uh, they need to know the brand and then also the type of rice. Okay. Yeah. So from the in investigation process, we create the awareness that uh, uh, the importance of PBL then improve their, their analytical uh, approach in their daily life. Okay, okay. So okay. That's, a, that's a good point uh, that you raised. Mm. And uh, I think okay. to provide nah. uh, the better uh, learning uh, process, so I also invited the the CEO of uh, the Kochabi, the traditional Hokkien uh, savory to, to our school to share the, the, 
the uh, how the entrepreneur run a process a, a, a business and the challenges she faced so this allowed the student press close to the the engage with the people okay yeah that's so good then that's good they also um, mm, i a little bit on they also suggest to 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 uh, the entrepreneur that uh, this uh, traditional peanuts uh, they 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 say uh, they suggest put almond instead of on on the uh, the snack is uh, to fulfill the younger gen generation taste because they 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 know that that uh, this moite uh, is not well known among the younger generation so they they suggest put the 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 variety of uh, uh, element on the mute and then the student also suggest uh, instead of, of fry it then they can bake the mute for oh. the leftover rice okay. for the new recipe thank you i see interesting um miss clarina anything to add on to what miss chin chin shared yeah uh, miss chin chin was sharing about uh, students coming up with their recipes so if you actually if you look at uh, the revised bloom's taxonomy and the highest uh, the hierarchy is uh, after evaluating uh, the process of learning, students create. So that is the, the top most in uh, Bloom's revised technology. So, you know, we are actually pushing the students to create, to be innovative, to be creative. So a lot of creativity uh, is uh, involved in PBL. It's not only just focused on uh, uh, learning yeah. it, it also a lot, 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 lots of engagement, you know, and a uh, lot of uh, thinking as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the uh, for the additional uh, input. Um, so we are moving on to the next topic, which is related to the community. Okay. So when we are talking about the community, um, you know, it plays a, a very very uh, central role in a place based learning. What are the important aspects that uh, we need to uh, to sort of like consider? You know, when we want to identify uh, the site or community. So maybe Miss Clarina, would you like to uh, share? Okay. Uh, when actually we, when we were looking at the site, okay, uh, when we focused on Kampung Dodo, uh, when we went back to the history of Kampung Dodo, we realized that the Kampung actually started growing with the mosque. Okay, when the mosque was there, the people came, people started uh, relocating and the kampung started to grow and everything was, uh, every important activity in the community started with the mosque. Okay? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things, uh, weddings, prayers, or they have any functions, everything is uh, done in the compound of the mosque. You know, the mosque was only not only a place where they go and pray and where they you know uh, share religious activities, but uh, it, it was also central to the community. There were a lot of things that, that breached people in the area. So that's why we, we thought that it was good. It will be good for students to learn because students are also part of the community. Okay, so when they uh, you know, look at the importance of uh, the mosque and uh, the role that it plays in the community, the students will also, once they leave school, they will become part of the community and then they will, you know, take over and continue the tradition. It yeah. won't just uh, die away. Yeah, very true, very true. Uh, and uh, Miss Lim, because um, for your school's project, the view, you know, your view on community is slightly different from what uh, Miss Clarina and Mr. Kang mentioned. So um, yeah, could you share on how, how, how did you guys approach, you know, when identifying community? Thank you. Uh, we choose the topic that uh, related to the student daily life. So that is more interesting. Yeah. So uh, the topic about the food is easier to catch the, the student <laughs> attention. Yeah. So for who joined us before, uh, do, you, uh, do you still remember our uh, topic was about sauce last yeah. two years? Yeah. yeah. This time our topic is rice, uh, yeah. the food that we eat every day. So the topic we choose are focus on the Chinese uh, necessity to begin a, a day. In Chinese, we call Chai Mi Yu Yan Jiang Chu Cha. So the translation is firewood, rice, oil, sauce, sauce, uh, vinegar, and tea. 
uh, by using the, the, the mind map, uh, student and mapping out the variety of the, the field about the rice. Okay, then including the uh, culture, food, nutrition, and so on. Okay, as first teacher suggests to work on topic, uh, the rice on culture. But after listen to the student opinion, they decided to focus on uh, the rice on plate. So yeah. this is what student is interested about. So we just take it. I huh? see. Yeah. I see. Okay. So um, yeah. So you can see that uh, when we talk about community, it need not be just only looking at the community that is outside. You know, we could also um, consider community as something inside, within, even within our school uh, uh, community or even our students. Right. Okay. So thank you very much uh, for. Thank so you. We, we, we don't need to think about the, 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 the topic every year changing and yeah, changing. Yeah, 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 correct, correct. Year. This so, is what we think. Yeah, correct. So this is something to do with continuity, you know, working yeah. with the community. Yeah, excellent. So uh, we are moving on to the final part of discussion. And I'm, I'm sure, you know, the audience, you would like to know this because this is related to the main challenges of uh, practicing uh, PBL at your school. And what are the strategies you know, that we could use uh, to overcome this? So maybe Mr. Kang, would you like to maybe share, um, you know, what are your main challenges? I think from the beginning, I think the main challenges is how to form a team, how to form a team from the teachers, uh, to so, make the project uh, asset, uh, successfully. So from there, uh, I think the school, they, as a school, they have uh, strategies uh, to give the chance to the teachers and let the teachers try to form a team. Uh, they can work together. Then only we come to the students. Okay, when we come to the students also, we have uh, some uh, challenges. Okay, uh, we need uh, some, some students, they have their exam. Okay, like Form 5, Form 4 students, they are waiting for the exam. So it's very hard to, to gather them together. So lastly, we found that uh, uh, maybe lower secondary school students, they can form a team to this project, but they are not very mature in their thinking. So lastly, my school, uh, we formed a team from the, the Form 1 students, okay? Uh, and although we say uh, before that, we think that they are not mature in their, in their thinking, but after that, we can see they are totally different. They can show their talent. They can show their skills where we don't know. As a teacher, we also don't know they have this kind of skill. They have the talent in this, uh, maybe some, some they are talent in... Uh, is it video taking? So we also don't know. Yeah. So from there, we learn each other. Teacher learn from the students. Students learn from the teachers. Then after that, we form a good team. Then we can communicate to the outsider. Then uh, we can make the project successfully. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. It's... Uh, these are the few challenges before we can really do this uh, project. Correct, correct. What about Miss Clarina? Do you have any other challenges that you are facing with? Okay, uh, I, I, I would like to highlight actually like uh, what Mr. Kang said to bring a group together, teachers who have the same mindset and who want to uh, explore new ideas. Not only that, you know, we have to actually sacrifice. I see that there's a question, how do teachers manage the time for PBL? Actually, you would you need a lot of sacrifice. You sacrifice your weekends, holidays, okay? Uh, the initially, you know, the initial part of actually uh, discussing and planning out the execution of the project, you really need to sacrifice a lot. And, you know, um, in between, we have a lot of schoolwork and, you know, we have a lot of uh, other yes. official things. But so if, when, when we put our mind into PBL, we, are, we should be prepared to do a lot of sacrifice. And also, uh, one big challenge when we are actually carrying out the project is when, you know, with this pandemic, students are supposed to go to the site to get first-hand data. You know, we, we want students to collect the data themselves. So, we, you know, we had a lot of uh, problems with uh, getting students to the site. So, that is one thing that, you know, if uh, Ms. Chin Chin would, would 
could actually share with us if she has any uh, way that we can actually uh, overcome this. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I think, uh, sorry, uh, um, uh, uh, Miss Lim, um, I think I would like to get Miss Liao, okay, as the school principal. <laughs> what are your thoughts, you know, about the uh, challenges uh, that the teachers have shared, um, you know, when they are implementing PBL, you know, and um, uh, from the angle of the school administrator, you know, uh, what are the strategies that you think uh, as the school principal um, you could do to help encourage you know more people to do PBL. Yeah, good morning yeah. everyone and then thanks for the sharing from the, from the panelists, a very good sharing today. Actually, uh, I would say that uh, PBL is a new approach of teaching in the classroom. We have to learn from the community because we are parts of the community. So it's the method of the way how do we, we sort in in our, our education system. I always feel that Malaysia Malaysia traditional education system has been established for so long time, and the spoon-fed system has been viewed as the more as the norm for far so long. So most of us, most of the teachers are taught in that way and continue the same way in their teaching. So in order for the revolution change, the, the full paradigm shifts have of the mindset, delivery in the change of teaching methods are needed. So the school must play a role of encouraging these changes, learn from the community embracing the enhancement of additional education for teachers. This will be an enormous effort for both schools and teachers. In this 21st century, it's not a realistic for us to continue with the old teaching methods to prepare for the students for current and future advancement of the world they live in. So in our school, we put the, like just now Ms. Lin said that, we put the PBL lesson in a curriculum lesson. And then the teacher will teach them in the lesson and then after that, if they need any extra lesson, they will use during the recess time or after school hour. But we would see that teachers have to sacrifice a lot of time with the students, with the mindset setting. So, but we, we, we have to understand that we have to prepare the students for the future work, not the present work. So we have to use the, mm. the latest approach to help them to survive in their future work. This is what we always think, and then we will support our students teachers to do all the all the methodology and to support them whether in the in the curriculum way or in the financial way thank you oh i see okay yeah that's a very uh, good sharing in terms of you know a strategy of uh, incorporating pbl as part of the curriculum right um i think we will be uh, discussing more on the impact and strategies uh, in the breakout sessions as well so thank you to all the panelists uh, for a wonderful discussion i'm sorry that you know uh uh, I've got to, you know, keep it short sometimes. Uh, but as a summary, uh, I think we can say that place-based learning connects, you know, classroom to the real world as what uh, the panelists have shared. Uh, it encourages uh, student engagement, authentic learning uh, in a real world setting, right? Uh, and based on the challenges shared, um, I think this pedagogical approach is not for the faint-hearted. So with that, I end this discussion forum. Okay, back to you, Razia.